So tell me, are you excited about Christmas? I don't know. <laughs> the views expressed on the following broadcasts do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. And now, here are your co-hosts, Stephanie H., Bruce H., and the Monty Man. Yes, indeedy. Welcome aboard. Hey, Bruce. Hey. Hey, Stephanie. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie H. is here. Bruce H. is here. Uh, Sandy is, is off this week. And uh, Bruce, you're, you're looking pretty good for a guy that just had a heart attack. Yeah. They keep well, good care of you in the hospital, eh? They just give me some more medication. <laughs> <laughs> it was like I was on a conveyor belt, and I went rubbing out the door. Oh, gee, <laughs> well, it yeah. I went from the emergency room to ICU to a ward and out the door in four days. Wow! I mean, that was that's moving. <laughs> Well, we're glad you're back, buddy. I'm glad to be back. And the listeners are glad you're back. And, and and I'm just, you know, I don't know how many more of these you can handle. But we're glad you're still with us. Uh, we we really sure. are. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm being looked over. And I'll, let me say on the air, thank you to all those that prayed. I really believe in intercessory prayer. Amen. And uh, the people that prayed for me, I... I really believe that I that's where my strength came from to mm. to endure from from God himself and so I think he hears that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So thank you everybody that did that for me. So what do you call what do you call Santa Claus after he's fallen into a fireplace? <laughs> 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 Is that a trick question? <laughs> you call him Crisp Kringle. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, what do you, what do you call kids that are afraid of sitting on Santa's lap? Uh oh. Smart. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Smart. Claustrophobic. Oh, Claus, claustrophobic. Yeah. Okay, uh, what do you get when you cross a snowman with a vampire? <laughs> you get frostbite. Yeah. You get frostbite. <laughs> frostbite. All right, one more. What what did the little turkey say to the big turkey? What did the little turkey say to the big turkey? Yeah. <laughs> Which translates into peck on someone your own size. Oh, All right, we'll give you one more. We'll give you one more. What did the missile? Uh, what did the mistletoe? Oh, where did the mistletoe go to become rich and famous? Think about it. Think about it. Hollywood. <laughs> oh my gosh. These are these are all uh, the, these are all uh, gifts to you today <laughs> from the, the Gazette, Twelve Step Gazette's humor page. Uh, you can get your copy at the Twelve Step Gazette. Uh, at 12stepgazette.com. It's a bi-monthly recovery news magazine. For, uh, and for editorial or advertising information, you can call 267-701-5501 or email 12stepgazette at comcast.net. You want to talk to Gen C. Gen C. And uh, the 12-step Gazette is is one of our one of our sponsors. And uh, let me see here. If I, see, I can even prove it to you. See there? Wow. Uh-huh. Full, That's page so cool. ad, full page ad. Full page ad. Yeah, the, the listeners can't see that, but it's a full page ad for Take 12 Radio. Uh, so uh, trivia today, later on, is brought to you by the 12 Step Gazette uh, this this uh, week. Uh, next week is going to be our Christmas show. I thought we just had trivia. We did. No, that was the humor <laughs> page. It was trivia. <laughs> Bruce C. <laughs> This week, the do's and don'ts of having a great holiday. Continuing um, with our topic of uh, why do we love to hate the holidays. Uh, but this week, the do's and don'ts on having a great holiday. And uh, I don't know that I agree with all these. I don't know if you will or not, but we'll have some fun with it and, and, and discuss it. Uh, but here's some interesting some interesting stuff. Um, 
You know, with the legalization of marijuana for the purpose of recreational use, uh, becoming more and more popular as, um, as it moves through our country, uh, a lot of people have been asking, how is law enforcement going to determine if you're under too much influence of pot while you're driving? You know, versus, we, we know we have breathalyzers for alcohol and that kind of thing. Uh, well, here you go. A new invention may soon t- uh, make it easier for police who pull over risky drivers to test them for marijuana impairment on the spot in addition to usual alcohol breath tests. A marijuana breathalyzer will begin clinical trials early next year, the Oakland, California-based Hound Labs Incorporated announced this week. The idea is that law enforcement will have one device out on the road to test for both THC and alcohol. Uh, said Hound Labs CEO and founder, Dr. Mike Lynn, an emergency room physician at Highland Hospital in Oakland. Typically, measuring the level of THC is done using urine, blood, or saliva. The results can show if marijuana has been used in recent days or weeks, but they are not a very accurate way to measure real-time impairment. So it'll say if you have it in your body, but it won't really tell you if you're too impaired to drive until now. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hound Labs has been collaborating with scientists at UC Berkeley to develop the technology. That always cracks me up whenever I hear Berkeley because, you know, that's like the stoner capital of the world, right? Um, the handheld device will be tested for roadside use by law enforcement agencies in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, appropriately so, I may, I may add. I can say that because that's where I'm from. Uh, Under the state's uh, initiative 502, which voters approved to legalize recreational marijuana in 2012, drivers are considered impaired if they test positive for at least five nanograms of THC per milliliter of blood. Sales of Hound Labs devices to police and consumers and consumers. So kids, mom and dad may be testing you. Um, could begin late next year, he said, and could carry a price tag of only a thousand bucks. Only? <gasps> well, yeah. I mean, you, when you consider the price of some of this technology, that's pretty cheap. Well, it makes me again that I should have been a lawyer because I could have spent hours and hours and hours <laughs> on this trying to make it for it to be a legal in the courts, you know, and that way we could have got rich. You could have been a rich man. Could have got rich. You guys ever been homeless? Been homeless? Yeah, I sort of am, kind of. Sort of am? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm actually um, living with my ex, renting a room. Okay. Prepaid. Otherwise, I wouldn't no, be that's there still. Freaky. Living with that's, her ex, scary. renting a room. That's a topic. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, baby. Yeah. What but about you, You know Bruce? what? That, that might be Okay. Well, it has to be right now, right? Are you yeah. are you are you safe? Yeah, oh, yeah. She's just not comfortable. Right? <laughs> no, that's that's no, good. Um, See, that's I think that's what matters. Okay, it's actually a miracle. Yesterday was like, um, oh man, it was. I actually did what I work a twelve step program, and I I've been working the steps, and one of them was I have this fear and. Um, hurt, which if I don't resolve it, it turns to anger and resentment. Yeah. And I was at the anger and resentment, like, <laughs> at, like turning on and off a light. Yeah. And finally yesterday I resolved that by speaking how I felt to him and listening to, you know, God's voice in my life, my God, you know, his voice in my life. And it was like, whoa, yesterday was the first day since I've been there that I felt this peace and serenity. Wow. And actually even some love for him and to know that he's hurt too. And that's how he's reacting to me. It was very healing. Good for you. Good for you. Bruce, ever been homeless? Yes. On the streets homeless, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, living in a car and and sleeping there. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've always had that. You know, I've had a vehicle where I could could sleep in but i've been homeless well check this out memphis tennessee being homeless has to be very difficult especially in the colder times of year but not for this tennessee couple (laughs) oh my gosh we need this 
Uh, they've been living in the lap of luxury above a Tennessee Walmart store. Wow. <laughs> the homeless man, 48 years old, Wilbert Thomas, admitted to police that he and his girlfriend, 54-year-old Ingrid Malone, have been living above the store for over two years. Wow. What they did to the attic baffled police and store employees. Now, you can't see them, but I saw the pictures of this. It was amazing. Very creative. Um, I don't mean to laugh, but these people really got one over on Walmart, said Lieutenant Marshall Wise. In the attics, we recovered two pounds of meth <gasps> they had somehow produced on a hot plate. Way to go, guys. Uh, they also managed to get food, drinks, a mini refrigerator, a big screen TV, surround sound system, bedroom set, hangers, clothes. I mean, if Walmart sells it, they had it. Oh, my God. These people were living good. They even managed to splice into the satellite TV wire and ordered NFL Sunday tickets. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <sighs> Don't get any ideas if you're homeless to camp out in the attic at Walmart. <laughs> well, the reason they got caught, by the way, is uh, they were utilizing one of the products that they had stolen from Walmart. Um, it was a, a, a king size bed, evidently, and they were utilizing it in a manner that some people use beds for. And it got so noisy <gasps> that um, some people in the staff break area early on before the store opened heard them and then turned them in. And they got busted. So they've been there for two years before anybody ever heard a peep. No, that gave me an idea. Oh no! So I actually, I actually have been sleeping in my car here and there because I can't handle the fighting and the mm. conflict. Because I'm, you know, working really hard at like trying to wow not run to that. Yeah. And one of the coldest nights I actually did sleep in my car. It was really hard because my nose practically froze. But yeah. anyway, um, what I had an idea. These people are brilliant. My idea was camo like take a picture of the scenery at a park because they won't let you stay the night in the parks or anything they won't let you eat there after right, like right. it gets dark and put it over my car to blend in with like the pond and stuff <laughs> the walmart no, thing creative. is way better <laughs> no, that's creative yeah, so we got nothing to do but sit around and think about stuff like this <laughs> <laughs> crazy hey uh listen i gotta i got a uh i i want to give kudos to um uh, Bruce Shelley and Mark uh, from Recovery 101. Um, I listen to this show on a regular basis. You, you can go to it at recovery101.net. Okay. Um, they've got everything from the boozy news, news not fit for booze, <laughs> <laughs> with stories kind of like the one I just told. That some of their listeners will send stuff in like that. Uh, two topics from the steps to... Um, you know, crazy meetings and, and, you know, they just did a show here called, uh, Jake's show, uh, about, uh, a gentleman that they were very close to that had some sober time and he went back out and died oh. and, uh, it was a very vital show, but it was hard to get through. It really it brought me to tears. Um, but th those are the guys at recovering one-on-one. They're down in the S Southern California area. And, uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on getting them on the show. Um, to talk about what they do, um, but just just kudos to them. So visit recovery one hundred one dot net, and you can subscribe to their shows just like ours on Podomatic. Uh, so if you're not a member of Podomatic, listeners, what are you waiting for? That's what they say at Recovery One Hundred One, and I I echo it. Um, so just go to our website at take twelve radio dot com and click on follow us on Podomatic and sign up for Podomatic. Once you do that, you can make comments about the shows. You can download them to your smart device. You can uh, sync them to your your Bluetooth on your car. You can do you can do all that that great stuff. Uh, we're also on iTunes now, um, and you can download uh, our app for iTunes and for Android phones for both. Um, so we're just you know staying on top of the technology thing. All right, we're going to take our first break, and when we come back, I think Cecil has something very special. <laughs> For all of us. So all don't right. go away, my friends. <laughs> More when we return, and we'll get on the topic do's and don'ts on having a great holiday. Don't go away. Serene Scene Magazine is published for individuals who are seeking knowledge, support, and hope. Addiction is a systemic problem, and the content of Serene Scene reflects the complexity of putting addiction into remission with special attention given to the loved ones of the addict. And now, 
Here's Andrew Martin, Editor-in-Chief for Serene Scene. I'm Andrew Martin, creator of Serene Scene Magazine. The whole purpose of Serene Scene Magazine is to help people help themselves to a long-term quality lifestyle of recovery. Please have a look at some of the technological features that it has, the audio files and the video files that are incorporated into the publication as well. I hope you have fun with it, and I hope there's something there for you. Serene Scene, a magazine for long-term healthy lifestyles of recovery. Visit www.serenescenemagazine.com and subscribe today. Men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to the struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. The Rapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide that safe and powerful healing environment. The Rapia exists to help people recover from addictions by developing and maintaining healthy, meaningful relationships with God, self, and others. To speak with an addiction specialist, call 1-855-652-4325. That's 1-855-652-4325. Or visit our website at www.therapia.net. Therapia Addiction Healing Center. Restoring lives one step at a time. <coughs> okay, everybody. Okay, <laughs> before we play Take 12 Trivia, I have a little... 12 step night before Christmas oh, no. to share with you. Are, are you ready? Are you ready, Bruce? Yes. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Stephanie. I'm curious. Let's okay. <clears throat> Good. That's, Here that's goes. different than ready. <clears throat> <clears throat> Twas the night before Christmas. We were all in the club enjoying a meeting instead of a pub. The <laughs> ashtrays were clean and the coffee was made. The big books were out, and we all had prayed. When out in the lot, there arose such a clatter. We all jumped up to see, what in the heck? What's the matter? The chairperson (laughs) with his big book and I with my smokes (coughs) headed outside to find these two weird blokes. They came inside. And sat at a table and said that they'd share as soon as they're able. To start with, they said, it's more than not drinking. It's doing your best to fix your sick thinking. (laughs) Think, think, think. Ha! (laughs) And the slogans we used, maybe they help keep the newcomer from getting confused. I'm not sure about that one (laughs) step one is a start they said we should know but after step two we'd all be a glow (laughs) we made a decision when we got to step three step four was real tough bruce (laughs) we all could agree (laughs) step five is the one where we let it all out and after step six and seven We are left with no doubt. When we got to step eight, we made our list. And then with step nine, we have to persist. After step nine, the promises ring true. We didn't just make that up right out of the blue. After that, it's on with the rest. The things we must do to be our very best. They put on their coats and got ready to leave. A pretty good end for this Christmas Eve. As to their names, we only could guess. Must have been Bill W. and Dr. Bob S. (laughs) The two men hopped into a 35 Ford. And as they pulled out, one of them roared. We leave this message for our sisters and our brothers. Trust God, clean house, and be of service to others. Oh, wow. And for all of you people, I just want to say, 
Have a nice holiday, but don't drink today. <laughs> Thank you, Cecil. Love you, that, Cecil. That was wonderful. That was great. Oh, dear me. I think it may be time for uh, Take 12 Trivia. <laughs> That's right, Monty Man. It's time for Take 12 <sighs> Santa Trivia. Santa Claus is coming yes. All right, Take 12 Trivia. Santa this week's Santa Trivia, brought to you by the 12-Step Gazette. Visit their uh, website, you and Bruce Springsteen, at um, 12stepgazette.com. All right, uh, three trivia questions and a bonus. Number one, how many reindeer pull Santa's sleigh? Here are your choices. How many reindeer? Is it 8, 12, or 24? <laughs> 12. <laughs> 12. 12? Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah, it's, eight. it's eight. It's eight. <laughs> I thought about okay, that. Can, can, I, I, knew, I knew that. Can, can, can you, <laughs> I just went with Bruce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Okay. Don't, don't follow Bruce down that road. Uh, okay, can you name them? Oh, no. That's, yeah, that's, I can that's, try. That's, 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 that's too far, isn't it, Bruce? Okay, try. Yeah. Dancer, Dancer, Prancer, Prancer, Donner, Blitzen. Yeah, Blitzen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rudolph, of course, was in there. No, no, no. actually not. not. Yet? Actually no, Rudolph not. Wasn't no, there. A- A- Rudolph just made an appearance once. Okay, we got four of the <laughs> eight. <laughs> Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen. That sounds right. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, Sorry, all you Rudolph fans. Rudolph just showed up one time, uh, as the story goes. And, uh, you know, know, if I had been Rudolph and I'd been made fun of all those times and then they wanted me, I'd have said, you know, take a hike, buddy. (laughs) You know, heck with you guys. Yeah, get off my nose. That's right. (laughs) That's right. All right. uh, Trivia question number two. What is Santa called in England? What is his name in England? Is it Bafana? Papa Noel or Father Christmas? Oh. <laughs> do Bafana, Papa Noel, or Father Christmas? How would I know? I don't know. How Take about... a guess. Okay, go ahead. Do, 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 the first do, do, do. one. Bafana? Okay. I'm going to say Father Noel. And Papa Noel? Well, oh. I, I, I'm going to give it to you because it was Papa Noel or Father Christmas. You got the father right. <laughs> So it's Father Christmas, yes. Sorry, Bruce. Um, All right. In the poem, a visit from St. Nicholas, which is more commonly known as... I've been sick, buddy. I know you have. (laughs) That's your excuse this time. Uh, uh, A visit from St. Nicholas, which is the original name of A Night Before Christmas. Uh, What has Santa heard to exclaim as he drives out of sight? Here are your choices. A, Merry Christmas, B, On Dasher, On Dancer, or C, Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. What do you think, Stephanie? Same. Same? You yeah. guys are correct. It is Happy Christmas to all and all a good night. Not Merry Christmas, by the way. It's Happy Christmas. Uh, okay, and here's your bonus. Where was the first department store to feature Santa? Where oh. was it? Was it Boston, New York, or Philadelphia? Oh. Where's the parade at? Uh, the parade is in New York. I'm going to say New York. Me too, New York. Well, you both being correct. Oh, it's Boston, isn't it? No, it's Philadelphia. Wow. In uh, 1841, J.W. Parkinson's store in Philadelphia, arranged for Santa to come down a chimney to the amazement of children. It wasn't for another 50 years, however, that department store Santa's became popular. So Philadelphia was the, uh, the original. Was the, was the original. Well, there you go. Yippee! Yahoo! Well, I learned a lot of things this, this week. A lot of useful mm-hmm. trivia. <laughs> Me too. Thanks, Monty Man. You bet. So we're going to be right back uh, with the topic... Do's and don'ts of having a great holiday. Don't go away. We'll be back right after this. Choosing a facility for drug and alcohol rehabilitation treatment is an important decision. 
It should be a place where you will be comfortable and supported, and one that is staffed, equipped, and programmed for successful outcomes. Introducing Free by the Sea, located on five acres of secluded waterfront property along the southwest Washington coast, away from big city distractions. The campus is a renovated resort property, so the grounds are lush and beautiful. Above all, the reason to choose Free by the Sea is the success rate of our counselors and staff in helping clients to transition to a life free from addiction. For more information or to schedule a visit, call 800-272-9199 or visit our website at www.freebythesea.com. Free by the Sea, charting a new course to recovery. Feliz Navidad. Cha-cha. Feliz Navidad. Jose Feliciano. Is he still alive? Jose Feliciano? I don't know. I don't either. I haven't heard from him in a very long time. <laughs> Fleas on a dog. Fleas on a dog. <laughs> Do's and don'ts of having a great holiday. Now... Uh, I'm going to preface this by saying we know that meetings by themselves aren't going to keep you sober. Um, in fact, you could go to meetings five, six times a day for the rest of your life and drink every day. I did it for three years. Well, you can go to meetings and control your drinking. And control it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but the, and drink the, in the meetings. to what we're saying. You're controlling your drinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting stuff. And so, you know, we can get into the, you know, the true alcoholic versus the alcohol abuser and all that kind of stuff. But that's not what we're going to do today. And so just having said that, we know that meetings, you know, just meetings, it just isn't sufficient for somebody to really gain, you know, what we hope you will gain in this whole recovery process and a relationship with your creator and, and that kind of thing. So having said all that, however, there are some things that we can do. To help kind of, you know, be a benefit to us during the holiday season. And some of these can apply anytime during the year. But particularly now, when so many people struggle for whatever reason. Uh, So here's some do's and don'ts. And you may agree with, there's one of these that I don't necessarily agree with. I don't disagree with it completely, but I'm not so sure that, I don't know. But we'll get to that. It's one of the don'ts. Um, So we'll just let you guys comment. Here's one of the do's. Make plenty of meetings. Um. Take my glasses here. Uh, there isn't any time of year when it's justified to cut back on your meeting attendance, least of all during the high stress times of the holidays. Naturally, <clears throat> there may be times when our schedule gets all messed up. Getting in a slow line while at Christmas shopping and working overtime at the last minute, a good solution for us uh, then would be to carry a meeting list with you at all times. If we miss our regular one, one can look up another one nearby and in a community like the Willamette Valley, there, there are meetings all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> I remember these are good ideas, especially for people that are new, you, you know, a lot of people, I don't know about you guys. I didn't have anywhere else to go for a long time. You know, I mean, I had places to go, but they weren't healthy and it was exactly. the only, only safe place for me to go to. Yeah. Uh, thank God that we had, we had the URS club back then. It was a, recovery club kind of thing, combination AA and a thing. Um, so that's one of the do's. Uh, here's one, call your sponsor. Well, you know, we should be doing that anyway, but, but you know, this sounds corny when we first think about it, but wait, check this out. Between Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Eve, we'll probably go through more feelings per hour than any other time of year. We're going to need some help with processing them all to make sure they don't build up into a big ball of trouble. Our sponsor is the perfect person for that task. Some good old one-on-one counseling. Now I know we say sponsors aren't counselors, but in this, you know, in this context, we're talking about, you know, a man with many counselors is a wise person. You know, when you think it'd be a good idea to maybe keep, keep a little close, closer contact with your spiritual advisor or your accountability partner or whatever. Don't you think you guys? Yes. During the holidays? Bruce? No. What? Bruce says no. You mean yes? <laughs> That's such a... Uh, he's num- going gonna, gonna to read all these and I can't hold my thoughts. No, no, oh. no go ahead. So here's number three. Keep a proper perspective. 
Uh, it's sometimes hard not to get caught up in the spirit of the holidays. It's everywhere. Family, movies, family movies. <laughs> oh, I don't know about you guys, but I can get, you know, Bruce, you're not a big TV guy, but I, I can get caught up in doing the um, the Hallmark Channel thing. One Christmas show after another, one after another, after another. And, and Lifetime. Uh, has things my my first christmas my second christmas my wife's first christmas my dog's first christmas <laughs> the daughter's first christmas it goes on and on hour after hour after hour so there's a lot of that i stuff. couldn't stand that i know you couldn't uh so uh christmas parties lonely feelings on thanksgiving no date for new year's eve however we can't <laughs> yeah really. we can't forget who we are and how far we've come uh, we're addicts and alcoholics who have actually gotten clean and sober. Wow, that's an amazing thing in all in itself. After all the pain and hard work it took to get there, sleepless nights, rough detoxes, and more, are we going to let a holiday ruin it all? I hope not. So, Bruce, you, you were talking, uh, you said, I hate Christmas. Rawr. Now, I know you don't hate Christmas, but there's some stuff you don't like about it, right? Well, I I really don't. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm kind of a guy that's been by himself or with just with his wife. Yeah, and uh, I've uh, the, the whole family thing to get involved with it. Like, uh, I'm still a work in progress. I don't like this about myself, but I'll share it with the viewers. And, yeah, you know, I I get upset with my family, and then because I get upset with them. And I have this defiant streak in me. You know, I don't want to, I think they should say something to me. I should say something to them. And we got family coming and here I am upset. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I'm not working a program. What I'm doing is, I some it amazes me how I got to wait till this thing really starts to eat on me. And then I go to God. When all I have to do is turn to him and know that my joy and my peace comes from him and there's something going on and to give me the strength to yeah. do the proper thing. Yeah. I don't have the ability to go to him and say, I'm sorry. Okay. Unless he gives me the strength. Or, so so you, without him, you're, you're going to lose your perspective. Yeah. So I, that kind of, yeah, in the process of getting there to, to making this amends and doing this, uh, it's really hard on me, mm -hmm. and it wears me out, and I'm just a horse rag. It can be exhausting. You know? It is exhausting. Yeah. You know? But see, I think that's who I am. Right. And uh, I want to change, and it's, it's been slow for me to do that. But it has been progressive. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I've had some of the most amazing experiences in my life to realize that there is a God and he does care. Look at the prayers I got from this yeah. heart attack and yeah. look at the people that showed a concern. And that's what I want to talk about really when we get to the, about making a lot of meetings. I'd like to make a statement yeah. about that. You bet. You bet. You yeah. bet. But what about you? You Stephanie? can you lose your perspective during the holidays? Absolutely. I got to say one thing, you know, with that whole thing with Bruce, I want you to know that I prayed for everybody out there that was hurting too and had a friend or mm -hmm. someone in service work this long that has done this, put their heart out mm -hmm. there like you both have been doing. I'm so grateful. Mm, I prayed for their families too, because, you know, we all experience hurt and you family have. members that are hurt. Yeah. Okay. About this holiday thing. Yeah. Losing perspective. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, you see, um, <laughs> I was blind, mm. and now I see, mm. and because it looks like I'm looking out normal and acting normal, I'm still, like Bruce said, I'm a work in progress. Mm. And like my family, like my beautiful daughters, they're thinking, oh, mom's back, you know, oh, good, you know, let's just, ah, it's like, I um, feel like I, one of those amazing stretchy women on TV, uh, mm. Incredibles. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I can't do this. You know, I'm really actually not stretchy. <laughs> no. So it, it tests my limits, you know, because they don't realize how much I drink, you know, to not feel, to like pretend I'm somebody I'm not, you know, just to fit in. Right. And now that I'm real 
it's like I got to go through feelings. You know, I love them so much. And I realized, too, in loving them so much, my God, look at our God. If I mean, could I have given up one of my own kids for somebody like me? Mm. Oh, no, there's no greater love in this universe than that, for real. Wow. And then when I think about that, too, this is going to make me cry, probably. But like I said about my ex earlier, you know, I even have forgiveness for him because I saw, you know, Jesus holding his hand. And Jesus didn't just die for me, Mm. you know. And so it's like I got to let go. I got to say I'm powerless over this and I got to say, you know, I surrender and I don't I just want to be a servant. You know, I don't want my own will anymore. I want his will. So, yeah, I'm trying really hard this holiday to stay sober and be real. And I've got what I've got to offer because, like I said, I don't have a lot of money. Sure. But money does not buy happiness, freedom, peace and and serenity like I found with you guys. In this awesome family. Anyway, I'm going to be patient with them and kind and be there and enjoy my moments. And one thing that a member told me that's just really resonated with my soul is be still and know that I'm God. So when I don't know what to do, I just sit. Hmm. That's really good. That's really good. That's all I've got. And this is a perfect segue into this next one because you, you, you really hit it. Stay humble. Stay humble. Uh, we have to remember that our grandiosity, our innate desire to feel important, tends to let a little out of control, uh, get, a, get a little out of control sometimes, <laughs> especially with gift giving, uh-huh. approval seeking. By the way, those two can be married together. Yeah. I'm going to get your approval by what I buy you. Um, and our desire to do the right things. We don't want to put too much pressure on ourselves here. We are not going to be able to please all the people all the time. We have to be able to say, I can't. I wish I could, but I'm sorry I can't. Uh, that sentence of acceptance and humility can save us a heck of a lot of self-torture. Boy, I love that one. Because you, you said it. You, you may not have a lot of material things right. to give. And it's okay to say, I can't. I'd love to, but I can't. Yeah. I don't have that ability. And that may be not just with, with gifts, but even with service. You know, somebody calls you up and says, hey, I need help moving my couch. You may have to say, you know what? I can't today. And that's hard for us because we're so codependent. You know, we, yeah. we want to just fill every need and rescue everybody so we feel good about ourselves. And don't you know it's an altruistic movement, so I have to be on the top of my game all the time, especially during the holidays. I've got to say ho, ho, ho and keep a smile on my face. And it's not always like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because of the way I treat one individual in my family, I offend others. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. And I yeah. have to really be careful of that because I'm doing just what you said. I'm trying to purchase or, or manipulate this person's affections uh, towards me, and it's offending somebody else, you know, a mother of another child, mm-hmm. as I'm trying to give relief to this child, you know, and there's such a, there's just so much behind it, you know, there is, but it's there and we have to admit it. And I think it's another example of who we are in our need for God. Yes. Yeah, I do too. You know? I do too. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one on the dues is uh, hang with recovering people. I like that they said that they didn't say hang with the winners. Because, you know, what? Well, we get this attitude. We get this haughty attitude. Well, I just hang with the winners. Well, that's kind of a loser mentality, in my, my opinion. I mean, if you're just going to hang with people that are doing it right all the time, then where's your love for those that are hurting? I mean, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So people that are in recovery uh, aren't always winning. Sometimes they're hurting pretty bad. Um, but it says, hang with recovering people. We have a, We have similar issues. We have a certain way of talking about things that always seems to make everything feel a little better. We know how to live, laugh, and learn from each other. For many of us, the fellowship is like the club we always wish we could belong to. Bruce, you talked about this before. That now you have now you have people that you can hang with that you never had before. People that understand where you're coming from. Exactly. Where maybe some other people just don't get it. And it's okay they don't get it. They're not us. It's all right. We shouldn't be judging them. But we have a way of, you know, communicating. It's, we got a lingo going on, right? 
Yeah, I like to tell people that it, God has shown me how to have the kind of fellowship I've craved my whole life. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so he's he's given me that. You know, when you look at people differently and mm-hmm. you stop looking at them for what you could get, it's all about you. Mm-hmm. A whole new world opens up to you, you know. Right. Yeah. I'd right. like to talk about this meeting thing. Okay, if, let's, if, let, if, let's if sit on that. Is. By the way, this is this is the first half is the is the, the dues, and we're going to talk about the meeting thing that Bruce wants to talk about. This is, uh, by the way, this is out of, of the 12-Step Gazette uh, on page 15 of the November-December holiday issue. Um Okay, so the first one was make plenty of meetings. Yeah. Okay, so you want to expound on that. Yeah, and it, it touches on something you already said. I think that that's true, okay? But you have to ask yourself why you're going to meetings. And if you're a recovered individual, mm-hmm. my main purpose for going to the meetings isn't for me anymore. Right. See, my main purpose is to go there to see if I can find someone that I might be of service to. So I have to be a good listener, you see. Mm -hmm. And in the process of doing that, these other things that I've talked about that I'm going through seem to hmm, not seem so important when I'm working with with other people and trying to be a benefit to them. So there is a there's a reward for that. A reward for it. Yeah. But it only comes through, you know, uh trying to be of service to those. And see, and we know what they're going through. And, oh boy. Yeah. Because we do have that lingo, because we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. people are having hard times with the you know, with the holidays. I don't understand some of this emotional stuff that people go through with it. And uh but when it it's in my realm mm-hmm. of 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 when the I can hear the bell ring, you know what I mean? I yeah. know what they're talking about. Yeah. Well then I I make an approach and I just have conversation with them. Yeah. You know. And know that there is others because one of the things that we're taught to do when we make these meetings is we learn to hold one another up, to help carry one another's burdens. Mm. You see, mm-hmm. we're not there anymore to tell stories and and do those things. We're there to be of service. Are we willing to put our stuff aside for the betterment of others? Mm-hmm. You see, that's what we're trying to do. We're mm-hmm. trying to learn. So I think meetings are good, but why are we going Why are to we it? there? Stephanie? Mm-hmm. I got to say... Just because on the subject of Bruce just got out of the hospital and all, for me, this was a life or death situation for real, okay? Mm -hmm. I literally was completely without anything to keep my spirit beating inside, okay? Until, thank God, why am I so cry sometimes? I don't know. (laughs) But I'm just so overwhelmed with gratitude because I had no part in keeping the doors open. Or just like Bruce said, the service work that you both are doing, I didn't have any part of it, but I had an emergency. I was dying. And you guys, out of the gratitude that you had for the program working and the faith and the service work and everything, kept the doors open so I had a place to go to get well and to find God again. I'm so incredibly grateful. I really am. It's a gift, you know. Mm -hmm. It really Mm -hmm. is a gift. Yeah. And am I a good steward of it now? I hope to God so. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Good stuff. You're touching my heart here. <laughs> you, re- you really are. Oh, well, it's true. Um, yeah, me. yeah. So here's some don'ts. <laughs> and by the way, may I just say that if... if <laughs> and, and I'll... <laughs> Brucey. Oh, no, right. if, 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 if I focus on the do's more yeah then i'm not gonna have a whole lot of time to do the don'ts you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna be focusing on that as 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 much we thought we turned your phone off and it went back on (laughs) oh it's not it's not yours okay um maybe it's mine oh it is mine it's over there okay (laughs) technology um but here's some don'ts anyway um 
I'm going to leave the one that I kind of have some issues with uh, for the end here and let you guys expound on it. But here's one. Don't listen to the voice, quote unquote, the voice. Uh, Not to be confused with the television show, the voice. Um, Most of us know what that is. It sounds like us thinking. But really, it is our uh, our illness taking in taking in our own voice, trying to convince us to do something that in our gut we know we sh- uh, sounds crazy. We know we shouldn't be doing it. No, so don't don't listen to that. It's not um, it's not a good idea. The disease of addiction often lives most powerfully between our ears. It is the result of years of record tapes being played and stored in our psyche because those messages were the way we thought we would be able to deal with life better. In recovery, we learn not to listen to those old tapes. Mm -hmm. And it's true. It's in our subconscious mind, and that part of the brain learns very slowly. But once it gets it, it never forgets it. (laughs) That's true. I'll tell you what I was told, because it worked for me, Mm -hmm. that I spend entirely too much time listening to myself Mm. what i had to learn to do was talk to myself and here's what i mean by that is i replaced it with scriptures i know Ah, and then i used those you know i talked to myself preached to myself if you will Mm -hmm. you know about things and let that ruminate in there and take the place of those thoughts of the thoughts see so i'm trying to renew my mind Wow. That's really good. Uh, a lot of theologians will say that that's one of the m- biggest benefits of scripture memorization is to be able to recall those things, those bi- those Bible verses. You know, when the enemy of your soul comes knocking, mm-hmm. because he has to flee. Yeah, what are you going to put in there? What are you going to put in there? If, if, if yeah. I don't have something to do right? to talk to myself about, then I'm going to listen to it. And I'm Ooh, that's good. really good. If I don't have something to do to talk to myself about it, then I'm going to listen to it, and that's not going to be good. Yeah, it's like yeah. he's being Ooh. his own friend. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like Bruce, it. Being your own friend in three D and, and in good. color, yeah. and you're being a good friend. Right on. <laughs> I believe that God awoke me, and so I I want the spiritual things of life in, instead of the physical. Yeah, and and their war is there, of course, but yeah. sure, you know they. I have a desire that I never had before. Yeah. And that's the only way I yeah. have to put it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Why am I wanting spiritual things? It's crazy. It's not crazy. <laughs> spiritual but it's, it's, it goes so contrary to the way, you know, we've been living. And that's why we say it's crazy because it just seems so contrary. Yeah. You know, and yet it's the one, most wonderful thing in the world, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm awake. But wait, there's more. You know what? The fact is, <laughs> the fact is, we can't take like Bruce and I both being in a place to where we, you know, got close to. De- Actually, I did die a little bit. But anyway, yeah. Um, being there, you realize, oh my gosh, this is it. You can't take anything with you when you go. You can't even like I couldn't even take my kids who yeah. I would have loved to take. I was gonna miss their smiles. I was gonna. Then I was missing flowers and I was missing everything. And then that's it. And then I'm back, so yeah, I'm liking it. Wow, <laughs> wow. Uh, don't throw a pity party. Here's a don't. Don't throw a pity party. This can be a really uh, rough time for many of us. We may not be able to see our kids or grandchildren or whatever uh, for whatever reason, and it would be very painful. Maybe our parents aren't alive, and we miss them a lot uh, this time of year. Perhaps we've ruined our marriage, and we wish we could fix it. Uh, now that we've uh, become clean and sober, our lives, like everyone else, uh, will have its share of sadness. An appropriate amount of time and emotion pondering these situations is normal, but we are not allowed to dwell on it. Feeling sorry for ourselves is not going to get us anywhere, but extremely depressed. We have to feel it and move on. So don't throw yourself a pity party. It just isn't worth it, is it? Well, I'm telling you, it's it's like an old friend that I want to cuddle and say, where you been? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that was the worst yeah. thing in the world for me was just sit around and ruminate on, you know, how everybody hates me. And, right. And, you know, and I'm going to I, I even pondered killing myself and then they'd really feel sorry for me. Oh, you know? I mean, this is serious stuff with me. It's this, yeah. this 
you know, self pity. Mm-hmm. And when I realized it was just another form of self, of who I was, oh, God was wonderful to me to open that door and let me take a look at this because it's the nastiest thing I've I've ever wanted to see and look at was this self pity in this way I felt sorry for myself. You know, and that I was gonna get you to either join me in what I did or feel sorry for me. Right. Right. Jay, and it, that was amazing to me to see that how I use that to manipulate the world around me. So it's a marvelous thing to 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 do that, and I agree. You don't want to do that, yeah. But it's really hard. What are you going to replace that with? Yeah, it, what are you going to replace, yeah, replace that self pity? It's on. been yeah. such a huge part of your life, right? Save. You better have God in your life. You better have the Spirit. Y- you know, <laughs> uh, um, on on uh, on one of the shows on Recovery One Hundred and One, uh, Shelley, one of the co-hosts, uh, was talking about self loathing. And she was stating that that women seem to do this a, a lot. And I'm going to ask you what, what you think about that. This thing, you know, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I don't look good enough. I'm not at the weight that I want to be. I don't. I don't uh, treat people like I want to treat. I, I just kind of loathe myself. Do you find that true? Oh yeah. You go through that. Yeah. Yes, without love within myself, it's weird because I felt like it didn't matter what you said. If you said, oh. You look nice today or whatever. I wouldn't accept it in. But if you said something I agree with inside of me, if right. you can just imagine a little drawing with all these negative words inside, yeah. which I saw a little girl do this once because her mom was an addict and called her all these names. Well, mm-hmm. they went onto this little paper, mache looking doll on a piece of paper. And if you said those things to me, I'm like, oh, yeah, I already know. Oh, yeah, I already know. You know, but you say something nice to me. Say that, you know, I enjoy being with you or something like that. No, no, you know. Right. Yes, it's true. For me, it was. Now it's not. Yeah. Now this little person that I see inside me, I get to be the mom too. I get to be the friend too. This little spirit that's growing, you know, in love. Yeah, yeah. It's a new yeah. thing. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah, I do yeah, too. I do too. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, don't focus on the negative. Don't focus on the negative. Uh, in any situation we find ourselves in, we have a choice of how to view things. We can focus on what's not going so good for us. Or we can think for a minute and say to ourselves, wait, why am I going there? Why am I going there? Uh, We need to train our minds to look at what is good. We are people who have been known to automatically focus on what's wrong. It's about time we start to look at the positive. Like everything in life, it just takes a little practice. It will start to become natural. Uh, This piece that says uh, we are people who have been known to automatically focus on what's wrong. I got called on this by my son. Now, I I have another term for it, and I guess this is my justification for acting this way, and I didn't even realize it. I call it being practical. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here, here's an example. My wife says, and, and, and for those people that aren't that that can't see this, uh, I've got these these snowflake things hanging from the lighting fixture in the audio booth. Um, And we had a bunch of these, but they had glitter on them. Right. And Marsha wanted to hang some on our red curtains in the kitchen. She goes, wouldn't that look good? And I said, yeah, that would look really good. But this is, this is what I do. And I do this. I said, you know what you're going to have to do? It's going to get glitter on the curtains. And then you're going to have to take the curtains down and wash them and try to get the glitter. She goes, see, you're doing it again. She goes, this is what your son's talking about. Because Colin will say, uh, Dad, I'd like to go to uh, take the car and go take my girlfriend ice skating up in, in Newburgh. You know, and instead of saying, because that's fine. But it's just saying, well, you know, that's a great idea. I think she would really love that. The first thing I say is, right, well, you know, you know, you really need to watch the weather because, you know, it's been really, really raining hard and there's flooding up there. You might run into that. But you know, I'm, I go there automatically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm just being practical, guys. And they're going, no, you always come up with the negative. Oh. Ah, that's a really hard one for me because mm-hmm. I think I'm being helpful and it's not helpful. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, you know, Colin one time says, you know what? I'm not going to tell you anymore. 
you, you know, so I was kind of closing him off to me. So I have to work on that on a regular basis. People that live in the doom and gloom, like a lot of us have mm -hmm. in the drug world and those oh, type yeah. of things, uh, this stuff seems okay to us. Yeah. And to, to do that, you know what I mean? And it's just another form of, I don't know what, uh, I think of that selfish and self-centered lifestyle. Yeah. You know? But I, I, I got to admit to the same thing, Monty. Do you? It's a hard one to see. It is. And we need people to help us point those things out. Yeah. And then we have to be able to accept that. And then we go to, you right. know, like I believe, go to God to ask him for the strength to start to knock this stuff off. Yeah. See, yeah. Because it's just, we just don't stop. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing this our whole life. You know. Yeah. What are you going to say, Stephanie? I do the same thing you do, you do. Matter of fact, literally driving around in the uh, truck. Yeah. And everybody's like, let's go four wheel. And I'm like, I don't want to clean up the mess. So there's no way I'm going. I'll avoid fun if it means work afterwards. <laughs> but this is my, my one little piece of bit for you on that. Yeah. The people I was with volunteered to clean the truck. So I might go have fun someday. Well, good for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe if someone else washes those curtains, you'll be okay. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like, let's get a live tree. Well, let's make sure it's not too. <laughs> It is. It's crazy. That is good. Yeah. Yes. I second that motion. Oh, Lord. She might have you to see go my to wife will come back. Well, you're not going to wash them anyway. I mean, I'm going to be the one washing them, so what do you care, right? Yeah. Get someone to decorate them who wants to wash them. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, so somebody, so my sense, let's get a live tree, and I automatically go to, well, I'll make sure it's not any taller than eight feet, and blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm, I'm already going Can there. I point something out that yeah. I think is important for us to see? Is, see, we want to go out and work on this stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we want to let other people, like, we're all laughing and get somebody else to do this or or somebody that wants to yeah. to to do the decorate and, and clean up. And so that we think we've dismissed the problem. See, we just problem's want, still there. It's still yeah. there. What God wants us to do, guys, <laughs> is let him in yeah. and and have your spiritual life have everything to do with your beliefs. Have your beliefs of him have everything to do with your values, and then that will change your conduct. But we want to go out here and change the conduct. We want oh, to yeah, yeah. change how we are. Yeah. See? Yeah. And, yeah. And God wants us to change from the inside out. See, he, he wants first, that to be kingdom. the center of our life, right. that spiritual life, instead of this selfish and self-centered life. It's true. That's so right. first, th first things first literally means seek ye first the kingdom of God, then all the other things will exactly. work out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, if it works if we if 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 we if if we get the stuff spiritually lined up, all the other stuff falls into place. Big book talks about that. Here's the last one, and we're out of t actually we're almost out of time. Um, that I kind of disagree with. I'll let you guys comment on this. Don't go near dangerous people, places, and things. No, do not agree with it. I don't either. I, now I, I, I think you can't shield the addict. An alcoholic from those type of things. No, I'm not. I'm not suggesting. Now, if if you if you're deciding that you want to go hang out in a bar, oh no, you know because there's a pool table there, and and you are new in recovery, and you have a problem with drinking, that's probably not the wisest move. But, people, but that's not what we're talking about. No, we're not. That's not what we're talking about. No, and if, if, if you're early in sobriety, please understand. But no, I don't believe in shielding people from things. Right. That's the most, that's like throwing a blanket over it and expecting it to go away. Yeah. It does not work for me. I wasn't shielded. I used to have to meet with my sponsor in a bar with beer bottles sitting on the table so I hadn't cleaned off. Uh, wow. We made it through. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is where you have to use wisdom. You have to use wisdom. Mm -hmm. So, you know, based on my, and I've said this before on the show, based on my past experiences, my current circumstances and my future hopes and dreams, what's the wise thing to do? 
So, you know, if somebody's having a Christmas party, and I'm not talking about a drunken brawl and cocaine's flying through the, you know, of course you're not going to go to that. <laughs> but if somebody's having a Christmas party, maybe maybe your job is throwing a Christmas party, you know, and they want you to MC the thing or they, they want you to be in charge of this. You can do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're going to they're going to have Jack Daniels at the bar and someone's going to have champagne. You don't have to drink it, you know, you, but you can go to the Christmas party Maybe you don't want to spend a whole lot of time there, but you can go and visit and say hi and be respectful and and, and then and leave. I mean, exactly. you can do that as long as you're in fit spiritual condition. Yeah. See, my granddaughter yeah. had a b- birthday party at the uh, uh, French Fort Legion. The Legion. Uh-huh. And uh, so I went up there and had the party with her and then I left, you know, but it, it, I wasn't going to avoid that. What do you think, Stephanie? What do you think about this? Well, what I hear him saying for me is that he went there with his sponsor. He had that support, that hand with him to sh- show him how. No, I and had, also it, it didn't go with a sponsor. I just had good oh, reason to go. Oh, to the bar for your meetings? No. No, no she's I, talking about when you met with your sponsor went, in the bar. your sponsor at the bar, you oh, said there was oh, oh, still yeah. beer bottles around and everything oh, yeah. so on. your sponsor was there you and your sponsor so i'm seeing this here he is he's having his own experience strength within to resist the temptation he has someone there with him and then next time he goes maybe he's strong would i do that for me would i go there maybe someday in the future i'll go there just as a support person for someone else possibly right. but i'm um, on my own accord i know that seeds are planted when i go into places like that and they grow like dandelions they're really hard to pull up Actually, more like a morning glory route. <laughs> you know why I went? What? My what? sponsor smoked. Ah. Oh. And she could smoke there. <laughs> and so uh, she, we went to see, and she realized that if it bothered me, yeah. then she would leave, and I would leave, of course, with her. But, see, we went there because she liked to smoke, and it didn't bother me. So we'd wow. meet there for she could smoke, and we could talk about this step work and interesting what it was we do that's amazing yeah thank you for yeah. sharing mm-hmm. that i had to uh there in early 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 sobriety uh and i lived in a little town and, and there was one store and their vegetable aisle was right across from the beer aisle and um i had no business going down and buying vegetables because I was so, I hadn't had that, you know, the Spirit of God was not living in me and through me and giving me the strength, you know. Um, but at some point in the step process, that occurred, and I was able to go get my vegetables. At some point, you have to live in this world, and you're going to run into that stuff. Now, again, you, you need to use wisdom, you, you know. And, and and so we're not suggesting that you put yourself in harm's way. No, you don't want to put yourself in harm's way. And and you know what that is. Come on. You, you guys out there listening, you know what's harmful and what isn't. You can justify all you want to. Uh, but for crying out loud, if we don't get to a point in our recovery process where, where we're depending on, on our creator's strength working in us and through us to keep us safe and protected, when we have a perfectly <clears throat> excuse me good reason to be somewhere, you may, it may, your job may require it. I knew a locksmith that had to go into bars all the time to change locks. And he was in the fellowship. He, he wasn't going to quit his job. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, but he had to do certain things to, to get to that, that point. And that's why if you're just going to meetings, particularly in the holidays, if that's all you're doing and you're not doing this step process and you're not depending upon God uh, to keep you safe and protected and help guide and direct you, then you are going to be in deep weeds. Then if you're going into the bar to change the locks or whatever you're, you're doing, then you, you're probably going to get screwed up yeah. because you're depending on your own strength. This spiritual experience that we've had is freedom from the bondage of self. So we should be able to go anywhere you know, and experience that. And it's about being spiritually fit. On a daily basis. It's contingent upon that. And it's just vitally important to me. For a man that's that's been in bondage his whole life to be free. See, I don't want to be in that predicament again. Right. And I have struggles with it, you know, because of my health all the time. Yeah. You know, but I'd rather go through those struggles than be in bondage again. 
So we we are out of time, and I'm I'm trying to where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where are you? Yeah, I'm not gonna find it. I'll talk about it next week. Uh, next week is our Christmas show, our Christmas special. Yay! Yay! We, we have a Christmas show. Yes, we have one every year. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> yeah. So again, I'm, I'm gonna want... wear a Santa Claus hat. I've got I've got a couple of them. Um, I, again, I want to give a plug to Recovery One Hundred and One to visit their webpage at recovery one hundred and one dot net. Uh, and uh, while you're there, sign up uh, on Podomatic. If you're at our website at take12radio.com, sign up on Podomatic, and you can download load our shows uh, on your smart devices and all that kind of great stuff. Um, you can also subscribe to our shows on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Monty Meyer, M-O-N-T-Y-M-E-Y-E-R, or just follow the links on our webpage. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Listen, you guys, thank you so much. For being here once again. You better be able to turn my phone back on. <laughs> I don't want to turn it on. You don't want me to turn it on. <laughs> All right. Until our next broadcast. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you. Bruce, thank you. Thank you, Monty. Thank you, Monty. We are wishing God's perfect serenity. For who? For you. For you. <laughs> for, you. for you and you. And you. This has been a broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting.